means of transport and plants. Introduction. First point. Plants need to move molecules over very long distances, much more than animals do. They also do not have a circulatory system in place. Second point. Movement across short distances, say within the cell, across the membranes and cell to cell within the tissue has also to take place. Third point. In flowering plants the substance that would need to be transported are water, mineral nutrients, organic nutrients and plant growth regulators. Fourth point, over small distances substance moved by diffusion and by cytoplasmic streaming supplemented by active transport. Fifth point, transport over longer distance proceeds through the vascular system, the xylem and the phloem, and is called translocation. Direction of transport is important in plants. In rooted plants, transport in xylem of water and minerals is essentially unidirectional, from roots to the stems. Organic and mineral nutrients, however, undergo multidirectional transport. Hormones or plant growth regulators and other chemical stimuli are also transported, though in very small amounts sometimes in a strictly polarized or unidirectional manner from where they are synthesized to other parts. Types of transport. First one is diffusion. Second one is facilitated diffusion. Third one is active transport. In facilitated diffusion passive supports and antifoots are there. Diffusion can be explained as the net movement of a substance, for example, an atom, ion or molecule, from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Diffusion rate depends on the size of the substance. Obviously smaller substance diffuse faster. Diffusion of any substance across a membrane also depends on its solubility in lipids, the major constituent of the membrane. Movement over a short distance is safe from one part of the cell to other, or from cell to cell. No energy expenditure takes place. Diffusion is very important to plants since it is the only means of gaseous movement within the plant body. Picture explains the process of diffusion. Facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion, also known as facilitated transport or passive mediated transport, is the process of spontaneous passive transport, as opposed to active transport, of molecules or ions across a biological membrane via specific transmembrane integral proteins. Substance that have hydrophilic moiety, find it difficult to pass through the membrane, their movement is to be facilitated. Membrane proteins provide site at which such molecules cross the membrane. They do not set up a concentration gradient. A concentration gradient must already be present for molecules to diffuse even if facilitated by the proteins. In facilitated diffusion special proteins help move substances across membranes without expenditure of ATP energy. Facilitated diffusion cannot cause a net transport of molecules from a low to a high concentration this would require input of energy. In facilitated diffusion transport reaches a maximum when all of the proteins are being used, saturation. The proteins form channels in the membrane for molecules to pass through. Some channels are always open, others can be controlled. Some are large, 
allowing a variety of molecules to cross. Facilitated diffusion is very specific. It allows cell to select substance for uptake. It is sensitive to inhibitors which react with protein side chains. Porins are the proteins that form huge pores in the outer membranes of the plastids, mitochondria, and some bacteria allowing molecules up to the size of small proteins to pass through. Picture explains the process of facilitated diffusion. Passive supports and antiforts. Some carrier or transport proteins allow diffusion only if two types of molecules move together. In the support, both molecules cross the membrane in the same direction. In an antifort, both molecules cross the membrane, they move in opposite directions. When a molecule moves across a membrane independent of other molecules, the process is called a niport. Picture explains the symports, antiforts and aniports. Active transport. Active transport uses energy to pump molecules against a concentration gradient. Active transport is carried out by membrane proteins. Hence different proteins in the membrane play a major role in both active as well as passive transport. Pumps are proteins that use energy to carry substances across the cell membrane. These pumps can transport substances from a low concentration to a high concentration, uphill transport. Transport rate reaches a maximum when all the protein transporters are being used or are saturated. Like enzymes the carrier protein is very specific in what it carries across the membrane. These proteins are sensitive to inhibitors that react with protein side chains. Picture explains the process of active transport. table explains the comparison of different transport mechanisms. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like the video.